remember we talk uh, every podcast about the veterans and um, <clears throat> you know the people that put their life on the line. You know, fire uh, first responders now with healthcare workers in this COVID pandemic, and uh, we're coming up here on the 20th anniversary of. 9-11 and we both have some stories around that but what a uh what a crazy day that was for everybody and obviously um kind of a tragic day in american history and we'll probably have more conversations about this as um the years go by but uh you had a, a story about that and certainly wanted to we both wanted to provide some context and some you know some memories about uh where we were and what happened on 9-11 and some of the things that we learned from that so um, we're gonna we're gonna take a little left turn here and talk about nine mm-hmm. eleven and uh, maybe uh, hopefully honor some folks that uh, that um, you know perished and or um, you know helped a lot of people during those times. Yeah, it, it was a unique time. It's amazing to think that it is now twenty years removed from that uh, horrific event that happened in uh, in New York. Nine, what it was two thousand one. 9-11, September 11th, and I am playing with the Montreal Expos. It's my third year in the big leagues, and we spent a lot of time in the National League East, obviously, and we were on a current road trip. We were down in Miami playing against the Florida Marlins at the time, and I was in a hotel in Fort Lauderdale, and just to give you an idea, this road trip was supposed to be, I think, three or four games in Miami, and then we were headed to uh, to New York. We were going to play the New York Mets, I think, around September 14th, 15th, and uh, we were in Fort Lauderdale, played a couple of games in Miami, and I get a phone call. You know, I'm dead asleep, maybe about uh, what, 9.30 in the morning on the East Coast, and it's my mom. Now, here's the interesting thing. My mom's birthday is September 11th. So happy birthday to my mom. She listens to this podcast. And so I get the phone call and I'm going, oh, damn, mom's already on me about not wishing her a happy birthday. You know, so I kind of answer the phone. I'm like, hey, happy birthday, mom. She's like, are you watching TV? And I said, no, I had a game last night, you know, had a couple of pops with the boys. And I go, I'm a little gassed right now. I didn't plan on waking up for another hour and a half, maybe. And she's like, turn on the TV now. And I was like, what the, What could my mom possibly yeah. be watching on the West Coast that's going to impact me here on the East Coast? So, of course, I turn it on, CNN, whatever, Fox News, whatever it was. And, oh, my gosh, I, I, I cannot even begin to tell you that, you know, when you watch something on TV and, you know, this is 20 years ago and you're, you're wondering, is this real? How does this even happen? What in God's name am I watching? Why in the hell is an airplane crashing into one of the World Trade Towers? And why is this thing on fire? Now what's going to happen? I mean, there were a billion different things going through my head at that moment. And then to watch that tragedy unfold and the lives perish and all of the horrific visuals and stories that came out of that situation were absolutely unbelievable. So I get off the phone with my mom and immediately, you know, we, we were getting phone calls from uh, management and it's saying, you know, we're going to go to the field. We're going to have meetings. The Marlins are having meetings. The Expos are having meetings. We're having conference calls with Major League Baseball. You know, this, the, the easiest decision that day was to say, don't play. Uh, you know, we had to recognize what was happening in New York and recognize what was happening to our country because it legitimately, you know, you and I were, you know, we were in high school, I think, or maybe just starting college when, you know, uh, when we were going into Iraq to get Saddam Hussein. So, I mean, we really didn't have an idea of what war was. We had an idea of what we were trying to accomplish, <clears throat> but to, to, to see that on our soil, it really gave me the sense of, oh my gosh, we are under attack. And so the easiest decision was to say, okay, we're going to shut down the season for the time being and figure out what's going on uh, moving forward. So as a Montreal Expo, we were on a Canadian team, and immediately the airspace is shut down. Nobody's flying anywhere. And we, we are told that we can fly within the U.S., but we can't fly across the Canadian border. So our trek was work out at Miami, get on a plane, fly to Burlington, Vermont, and get off the plane in Burlington, Vermont with all of our gear, all of our equipment, and get to 
get to the border, it took us two hours. Usually a, a border crossing for us usually took maybe about 35 minutes. It took us two hours to get across the border because they literally went through every piece of luggage and every piece of equipment we had to let us across the border. We had to unload our buses, get the buses loaded, and then eventually got across the border and drove into Montreal. And it just so happened that Montreal was having a Supercross event and we couldn't use our field. So we drove all the way to Ottawa, Canada to the AAA affiliate and worked out there for about a week before the season started. But it, it was an awful time. It was a brutal time. And you really, the one thing that I, I take solace in, and we talked about this last year with the COVID crisis on how baseball can be such an unbelievably healing process for a society and baseball, I found myself in a position to be in a, on a ball club and represent something that could take the pain of what just happened away. And that's when I really took a lot of pride in being a Major League Baseball player. But it also helped me understand the impact that we actually do have by taking that field on a nightly basis. So it, it, was, it was tough. It was horrific. Um, I did lose a friend in that 9-11 in that, uh, you know, uh, situation. I didn't know it until maybe about a year afterwards because I got separated from this guy in college. His name was Brent Woodall, and he was a tight end on the Cal football team and was a left-handed pitcher on the baseball team. And, you know, just a mountain of a man who came over and played baseball and we got to know him, but uh, we didn't get to know him long enough. So, uh, you know, a lot of respect to Brent Woodall and his family and everybody else who lost somebody on 9-11. But, uh, you know, that's just a little bit of insight into what was going on on the major league level. But Tuttle, everybody has a story when these events happen, and it's something that is just embedded in my brain. Uh, one of those where where were you moments when something happened. Uh, what do you got for nine eleven? Yeah, <clears throat> I, I mean, like anybody listening to this podcast or anybody that was you know around during that time, I, I had just finished playing baseball. I was living in L.A. I remember specifically, and I got the same kind of phone call. Of course, you know, you were nine o'clock on the on the East Coast, but it was about six a.m., which you know I was not getting up at six a.m. <laughs> not back then, <laughs> you know. No kids, no. no any other, no other responsibilities at that point. But uh, yeah, and I, I and I think I turned it on when you know one of the towers was hit, and then got you know the the visual of the second plane hitting you know tower number two, and then you're thinking, oh gosh, this is something that we've never seen before. And you know, as you as you uh, so eloquently put it, you know, it was the first time that we probably you know you've heard stories from aunts and uncles and maybe grandparents about World War II and, you know, Vietnam. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it was the first time, like you said, um, where I think we realized that we were under attack and some of our ideology and our democratic viewpoints aren't uh, always so welcome around the world. And so it was a very um, eye-opening and a very, uh, you know, impactful moment, as you've already pointed out for all of us. But uh, you mentioned the people you lost, and this is a really interesting thing, but two um, guys, actually a Cal Berkeley guy, uh, who rode on the crew team guy named Mark Bingham was uh, my class in my year of high school. Um, and then another guy who was in the same, on the same flight uh, went to my high school for one year and played baseball a guy named Todd Beamer, Mark Bingham, Todd Beamer, both on the same plane that went down actually in Pennsylvania. They were on the plane that brought down that plane. Todd Beamer famous. Yeah, I think his wife wrote a book. Story, yeah. yeah. His wife wrote a book called let's roll, which is what those guys said as they went into the cockpit to, uh, kind of alleviate that stuff. So not only did I know these guys from high school, but you know, like most things you lose touch with them and you don't really know what kind of people they are. And in high school, you know, here's this pimply face guy, me <laughs> sitting next to another pimply face guy, Mark, or, you know, in, in my, you know, trigonometry class. And, you know, he went on to Berkeley and, you know, was on the crew team up there and, you know, you just lose touch with all these guys. And then you get to hear these stories, as you mentioned with your friend, Brent, Brett Woodall. But I just think, uh, you know, you hear the story and, and, you know, these guys, I feel like, you know, true character, right, is revealed in times of stress and, and uh, yes. tumult, I guess, for lack of, lack of a better word, like turmoil. And uh, both these guys, I, I don't know, and I don't know if it's ever been pointed out that they went to high school together. You know, Mark, uh, Todd Beamer kind of moved high schools. You know, he's one of those guys, like, I, I think he grew up in San Jose. Then he came to my high school for a year. So when I was a sophomore, he was a junior on the baseball team. And then his junior year, he left school again. And he went somewhere else. His parents moved. So this is kind of a guy who was pretty transient. So I didn't know. I remember him and, you know, one year on the baseball team, but I don't know if Mark Bingham and Todd Beamer knew each other or knew 
that they uh, went to the same high school for a year. But obviously, we've talked about those flights from Boston to San Francisco. They, they were still living on the West Coast. But anyway, they were on the same flight, had been to the same high school, and were, you know, two of the four or five guys that decided to, like, hey, we've heard the news. We've got the text messages. Um, you know, let's make a difference here. And they, and they did, um, you know, and sacrificed their lives, but also did it in the way that, you know, instead of going down passively and kind of wondering what's going on, they made a difference. Uh, hopefully in the lives of uh, others too, meaning, you know, they don't, I, they, I don't even know if we ever knew what their target was. Somebody mentioned the Pentagon or something like that, but I think they saved many lives and uh, realized that, you know, this was the best way to react in that situation. But uh, again, you know, we constantly talk about, you know, first responders and fire and police, but, you know, normal people or regular people can do extraordinary things when pushed to the limit. And uh, yeah, it was a very impactful not only event, but, you know, hearing stories about people that, you know, I was connected to via high school. These guys, like I said, just a guy that sat next to me in trigonometry class or a guy that I had baseball practice with, you know, you can hope or you can only hope that if you were ever in a situation like that, um, that you do the same that they did. I mean, really step up. And I think that kind of echoes what you said. I mean, maybe not in the same vein, but uh, professional sports can get all these people in the stadium, you know, holding hands and, you know, having a collective like, hey, we're back at America's pastime and we're going to kind of onward and upward. We're going to continue to move forward. Uh, so, yeah, just a just a really it's great to relive it in a sense that it's, you know, some of those things that we forget after 20 years, especially, but a really impactful event in our lifetime and hopefully never to be relived again. But, uh, you know, being connected to it in that way is uh, is something that I think of, you know, more regularly than maybe I would had it not happened. So, yeah. yeah. So the 20 year anniversary of nine 11 and hopefully never to have an anniversary like that again. Yeah. Dear God. No. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's certainly a somber time and a, it, it's a time of reflection. And I mean, every family's had it. Every, every person individually has had that shitty moment in their life, but not reflecting on that and understanding it. I, I think wouldn't help you move forward or understand how to make it not happen again. And I agree with you in the sense that it, it brought out some remarkable, you know, stories and situations in people as character, because you're right, you know, in those moments of panic is where you get to see that true self. And there were certainly people that stepped up, uh, you know, in, in, in a tragic moment like that, even inspired people to join, uh, the forces and and have the idea of protecting our freedom. So we will always, always uh, respect those who put themselves in harm's way, both here at home and abroad. We greatly appreciate. And if you are a veteran or if you're currently serving and listening to this podcast, know that uh, David Tuttle, Mark Ramos, and myself, we absolutely uh, adore you. And if you ever see us in public, make sure you come up to us and say hello and let us give our gratitude to you in a, in a heartfelt way face to face, because we do appreciate everything that you are doing. And, uh, it, it, you know, I just want to reflect a little bit on, you know, post nine 11 that season, watching the New York Mets go out and play the Atlanta Braves and seeing Mike Piazza hit that home run and just the emotion, you know, you could be 3000 miles away from a moment at still feel the impact of that and uh, it was remarkable to see how that game unfolded and, and the reaction and the relief of, of fans as they watched a game something that took their minds off of the tragedies that had just happened to them and allow them to to escape a little bit and then one of the most indelible in images that I have from that season is when the Arizona Diamondbacks and the New York Yankees are playing in the World Series in the first game in Yankee Stadium in the World Series has George W. Bush step onto that field with a flak jacket on, throw a perfect dime right down the middle. Uh, I believe it was Shane Spencer was catching that uh, that first pitch. And I, I, I vividly remember it because he walked out on the field and I'm going, first of all, I'm going, good God, this is gutsy as hell or courageous, whatever, standing in the middle of a stadium with who knows who out there. I can only yeah. imagine the protection around that stadium at that time. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, but he steps onto the mound, you know, gives the wave and then just throws a dart. And I vividly remember as that ball hit the glove and having it be a strike, I was like, oh, 
my like my skin raised off my body and I was like, Oh my god, how the hell did he just do that? But that's one of yeah. the moments that I'll remember most about all that. Yeah, it was a it was a you know, obviously we have a few things in our life. I mean, you know, the nineteen eighty nine earthquake, I was in the Bay Area, you know, obviously nine yeah. eleven. I mean, there are these things that are just, uh, you know, and our grandparents and have them, as I mentioned, from, you know, wars uh, of the past. And But we have these crazy events that are certainly etched in our minds. And we would be remiss releasing a podcast here on the weekend of the 20th anniversary of 9-11 and not talking about it. So uh, appreciate you sharing your story. And it's really nice to, um, you know, like you said, honor and remember those that, uh, that did some things that were uh, courageous and, you know, heroic for lack of a better word so if you like the video give it a thumbs up subscribe and hit the bell so you can get notified when we post new videos